Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. But what I do know is that this is 4F Beauty and you are most welcome. Now, you will have been able to tell from the thumbnail the title and if you've read any of it the description. This film today is the third film that I've done where I dupe an existing palette with shades that I already own. I've already done um, Melt Moete palette because by the time I'd saved up enough money to buy it it was out of stock and they're not bringing it back helpful. And the same with Raw Beauty Christie. Uh, I just couldn't afford to get the one that she did with Pure. Um, I really only would have wanted the bright side anyway. So I duped it. I don't normally dupe indie brands but on that occasion I couldn't get the palette anyway. The one today is duping the new Jeffree Star Blood Money. Uh, I put a film up a while ago about why I no longer support Jeffree on this channel, why I no longer use his makeup on my channel. Uh, if I remember, I'll link that in the description box for you. However, when I did support him, I was absolutely gagging for a green version of Blood Sugar. So he bought out a blue version. Then he did the Thirsty Palette. And then he did the one with Shine. And then there was the uh, cremated palette. And that was the last one of his that I bought. Oh, there was the purple one that doesn't fit in any of your drawers anyway. Blood Lust, that was it. Honest, I've got a hell of a lot of green palettes now and individual green shadows that I'd bought. So much so that I look at green palettes now and think, I don't really need you. The last green palettes that I bought were this sea coloured dupe of the Huda Khaki palette and I finally got my hands on Melt Gemini. But that is the last two green palettes that I bought because I have so many. I mean these are just the ones that managed to source the dupes for on that particular palette. I've got two more boxes like that of other green palettes that I was swatching and that doesn't even include all my Blush Tribe palettes like Hasina 2 and Layla 2 because Blush Tribe doesn't exist anymore. Um, I just need to wiggle, hang on a minute. <sighs> Right, okay. Um, yeah, Blush Tribe don't exist anymore, so I didn't even include all of their palettes that I've got. Um, all the ones from um, OMG I My Glitter, because I'd got a lot in there as well that I've got lots of beautiful greens. But 
I have managed, after five hours of swatching, to dupe the Blood Money palette. So if you want to find out exactly how close I got with my shades, which palettes and which singles I used to create the dupes. And later on I'll be creating this makeup look using my duped palette. And my friend you have the best seat in the house. As Sammy the Sloth Straw would absolutely attest to. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, get comfy and enjoy. Because here it comes. Right, okay. Up here somewhere I will put a picture of the Blood Money palette. I am just scrolling back up through my numerous photos to get to the ones that I want to discuss with you now. Which are, of course, my swatches. Now, I spent all of Sunday, see this? Literally referring to the screenshot that I'd taken of Jeffrey's swatches that he does on his I hate he does them on the palm of his hand but I get why because with his tattoos on the back it's going to affect the appearance of the colour so each shade I was going through all of my myriad of palettes my green ones swatching everything until I could find colours that were similar. I then wrote all of those down here, row, shade and what I matched them with. I then went through and wrote all the palettes out here. Once I'd got all of the, okay I've narrowed it down to these, I then swatched, so for example, row one, shade one, I narrowed it down to Colourpop Mint to Be palette, shade number one. One of my I've Put It Together palettes, and in that particular palette it was shade number nine, I've since stuck it into a different palette to make it easier. And from my Butonomy shadows, shade number 17. So I swatched those three together, looked at them against the swatch that I had of Jeffrey's ones and said, right, okay, the closest one to that is Colourpop Mint shade number one, which is the shade Get Fresh. Get Fresh at the weekend showing up showing my age so that was the procedure for every single shade swatching all of the palettes that had got a shade close to it then swatching all of the ones that I'd narrowed it down to side by side to work out which was the closest I'm going to put a picture up. The top of the picture is Jeffrey's swatch. The bottom picture are my swatches on the back of this hand. So, going from left to right, this is row one of Jeffrey's palette, shades one through six. 
the first shade is from the Colourpop Mint to Be palette. It's this one here called Get Fresh. The second shade is from the same palette, Mint to Be, and it's shade number four, which is this one here, called Seltzer. Shade number three is from Makeup Obsession So Dope. It's shade number 14, which is Hi. Shade number four is one of my singles from it's from lethal cosmetics and it's the shade vertex shade number five is from juvia's place the tribe palette and it's this shade here called tootsie And shade number six is from VE Cosmetics palette for the recently deceased. Shade over here called Skeleton Key. I do have a discount code for VE Cosmetics. It's BOMBER in all caps. I believe it saves you 10%. I don't earn from it. It's literally just a discount code for you. I think I got a pretty damn close match there to all of those. The first one could have had slightly more of a white base to it, but I still feel that that particular shade, the Colourpop Mint um, shade called Get Fresh, was the closest that I had managed. Uh, other shades for shade one I'd already said were two of my single shades. Shade two, that Colourpop Mint shade four, was the, the only one that I had in all of my collection that was close enough. All the others were slightly too yellow based or just the wrong shade. Uh, shade 3, I also had dupes in um, I Heart Revolution Avocado Palette, BH Cosmetics Pistachio Palette and the Viper Queen Palette from from Peachy Queen. Couldn't think of their name. So, row two. Same thing again. Jeffrey's swatches at the top. My swatches at the bottom. So, shade number one is from this Igneous Cosmetics tin. It was a collection they did called Lake Side. Now, I don't know if the this particular collection is available but I know that the shades individually can be bought from their Etsy site and the first shade that I matched with is this one here called Cedar and for shade number two on this row I matched this one here which is First Frost. Shade number three was from the So Dope palette again. And it was shade number 11, which is called Mood. This one here. Fourth shade is again from the recently deceased palette. 
and it is this shade here, Calypso. Shade five is one of my Butonomy shadows called River, this one here. And shade six is from the BH Pistachio palette and is this shade here, Cone or Cup. Now this is the only palette that I'm aware of that you might find difficult to get but although it's not available on the BH site anymore there's a lot of them I've seen on things like Depop so you should be able to still find it and it is that's the only shade I've included from this palette I tried not to use palettes that you can't easily get anymore so duplicate shades for that row for the first shade I found dupes in uh, Melt Gemini For the second shade, I found dupes in the Ace Beauté Oceanic palette, I Heart Rev Avocado palette, the Pistachio palette, and Subculture from ABH. Shade 3, I found a dupe in my Butonomy shades. I found a dupe in the Melt Gemini. And I found a dupe in Colourpop Good Sport. Again, I know you can't get that now, but I know a lot of people do own it. For shade 4, I also found dupes in the So Dope palette, the Natasha Denona Mini Tropic palette, which is the colourful row from the bottom of the Tropic palette. So obviously if you've got the big Tropic palette, you'd have a dupe in there as well. Colourpop Just My Luck and the Peachy Queen Viper Queen palette. Shade 5, I found dupes in the Igneous Cosmetics tin and uh, Lethal palette. And then for shade 6, I also found dupes in Colourpop Just My Luck, Revolution Chilled Tin Palette, and uh, So Dope. So, again, I found a lot of dupes for all of those shades. These just happen to be the closest dupes from all the dupes that I found. Again, I think I've got a really good match there. The only ones that I couldn't get completely bang on, shade number three. I got a lot of goldy green shades, but not a lot of yellow citrus green shades that were shimmers. I've got shades like that that are bang on dupes in matte but in shimmer that was the closest I could get likewise the shade next to it could have done with a little bit more brightness to it but again I had perfect matches in the mattes but in terms of shimmer that was the closest I could get and then the final row of swatches Again, top one is Jeffrey, bottom one is me. Shade one is from the Gemini palette, and it's this one here, Mochi, on the end. Oh no, Lethal was my Lethal Cosmetics one, wasn't it? Silly bit. Silly Billy. Right, shade two. The dupe I have for it is Habitat, which is this one here. Shade 3 is Kaleidos 
Escape Pod palette and it's shade Saturnalia, this one down here. Shade 4 is again from Lethal Cosmetics and it's this one down here called Simcope. This is what I was saying about these two being very, very similar on the eyes. But I don't think I say that until the end. So remember that point till you get to the end. Um, shade 5 is from Certify Affinity 2. And it's this one up here, which is Navid. And then the final shade is again from Gemini and it's Bonnie. Now, when you look at the photo of the palette, Bonnie is black with mica in it. But when he swatched it, you couldn't see the mica, so I've just gone for a bog standard black. In terms of other dupes for those shades, Shadow 1, I also found a dupe in Coloured Rain Safari Rain palette. Shade 2, I also found dupes in my Butonomy singles, So Dope and Gemini. Shade 3, I found dupes in Gemini and I had some more igneous shades in here and it was that one here. Shade 4, I found dupes in the Oceanic palette and the Kaleidos Sci-Fi palette. Now, Shade 5, you're going to find that in a lot of places. It was originally the MAC blue-green-brown shifting shade. And so many places have got that particular shade now. Um, one of my lethal ones matched it. I think there's one in Oceanic that matches it. Um, but the Affinity one was just so spot on, to be quite honest. I didn't bother swatching after that because I knew that I wouldn't get any closer than that one. And then shade 6, I also found a dupe in the Kaleidos Sci-Fi palette. So, um, as I said there, these are palettes that I already own. This lipstick is actually a dupe for one of his lipsticks as well. Uh, this is from a company called Slay Cosmetics, it's a UK indie brand, and the shade is Camolicious. Now, that particular shade, I happen to know, was out before Jeffrey did the khaki shade that he released at around, I think it was summer a couple of years ago, it was the white boxes. And it had You're Still on the Property and Jeffrey Who as part of the the shades and one of them was this khaki shade and I already had it in Slay Cosmetics and to be quite honest this is a better formula mm -hmm. much more moisturising than Jeffrey's and Jeffrey's don't dry my lips out but these were even better uh, more opacity on the first swatch you don't have to go back over it a second time but it feels so light I have to keep checking that I've got lipstick on because I can't feel anything on my lips at all which is perfect chef's kiss um, but the whole point of this was that I didn't have to buy a single shade in order to match every single one in Jeffrey's palette he's really taken his finger off the pulse greens started to come in well over a year ago well over a year and he proved you could do he could do a palette in six months 
greens have been popular for 18 months now probably more than that when I still supported him I was dying for him to bring out a green palette I really wanted a green palette that was the same quality as his blood sugar palette and he bought out a blue one and a purple one and the conspiracy palette and thirsty and cremated which is the last one of his that I bought and I'm just like really dude really you're bringing these out before you're bringing out a green one but as it stands it's done me in good stead because I don't need to buy a green one from him and spend 52 quid 52 bucks because I've got them all in some cases multiples of across various different palettes um, I mean this look was done using how many different palettes did I use one two three four five palettes and I bet if you've got green palettes in your collection I'm betting you could dupe most of that palette in the outro after I've done the makeup look I swatched some shadows that I think he missed a trick of by not having in the palette because that palette is still very Caucasian so many of those shades are going to look ashy and chalky and in a lot of cases not even show up on someone's skin if they have any depth of melanin. I mean I have some friends who've got beautiful ebony coloured skin that would not be able to touch these. And that upsets me because everyone should be able to have access to whatever colour makeup they want to use. Why should they be restricted to one or two colours or one or two companies? Because thought hasn't been given to how shades would look on their skin tone. He also missed a trick because normally the first shade in his big capsule palettes, or at least one of the shades in his capsule palettes, would be one that could dupe as a highlighter. I didn't see any in there that could have duped as a highlighter. Not for my skin. But, I just, the whole point of this was to show you just how close you can get by swatching what you've already got. Now, the palettes that I showed today, a lot of you will have, a lot of you are going to have the Colourpop Mint palette. You know, you're going to have the Kaleidos palette. You're going to have the Revolution, no, Makeup Obsession So Dope, and the Tribe palette from Juvia's. And if you haven't got them, you're going to have colours in your collection that will dupe them. So... My challenge to you, just have a look through your collection. You don't need to spend five hours swatching it all like I did. But just have a look through your collection and just see how many shades you've got 
that would match Jeffrey's new palette. I think you'll be surprised. Probably pleasantly surprised. And I hope it's given you a little bit of inspiration if you don't support Jeffrey into how you can still create beautiful green looks without having to put money in his pocket. Right, my beautiful ones, that is quite enough for me for this particular section. This film is going to be long enough anyway, the amount of editing I'm going to have to do, good lord. Uh, but I'm going to insert the second half of this film in just a moment where it will go back to me being completely barefaced at 7 o'clock this morning when I start applying this particular makeup look. So you can see how well the different shadows perform as well. And just gives you a bit of a bit of a, a clue or a prompt or a suggestion for a really beautiful all green look. Right my lovelies, here comes your tutorial. Hey lovelies, right, time for the tutorial bit. You will have already seen what the finished result looks like because you will have seen it in the preceding part of this film that I haven't recorded yet telling you how I duped Jeffrey's new palette. So, um, this still being a teaching channel, as always I zoom in really close to just my eyes so that if your eyesight's not what it could be and you watch me on a phone, you can still see what I'm doing. does mean when I look down you get a lovely glimpse of the widow's peak, but at least you can see what I'm doing with my eyes. I also go at a speed that even complete beginners can keep up with because of my chronic pain won't well, let me go any quicker than that. Um, I'm going to insert my usual clip in just a second or two where I talk you through the difference between deep set and hooded lids. Um, so many people with deep set eyes mistakenly believe or are told that they have hooded lids because the way that shadow wears on them through the day is very similar but to get the best look and the most longevity out of your look you do need to apply it slightly differently. So I will insert that clip now it will just be my eyes on screen so very uptight very close and personal um, and then at the end of it I'll be back to apply some of the multiple multiple palettes that I duped with and this is only about a third of the ones that I actually swatched with um, to my lids so here's your clip now um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crown Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush. 
just a very light layer and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease I have to cut onto the upper lid not just through the socket and if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow, so just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which 9 times out of 10 will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you brought it up high enough you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Right, okay. I'm going to start with this really big fluffy brush and I'm going to start with the Igneous Lakeside palette and the shade that I'm going to start with is called Cedar which is this lovely olive green here and this one is a dupe for Rotu shade 1 because he didn't give us a close enough shot yet of the actual names of the shadows. A lot of kick up but just tap off into the pan at least it means you're getting pigment on your brush. Uh, always hold the brush right at the very end if the um, handle is long enough brace it against your palm because it gives you some stability at this end and we're going to start with the Viennese Waltz blend which is natural turns towards the nose a flecker when we get there and reverse turns to come back out again. I do this because I'm 46, I've lost over 12 stone, that's over 200 pounds, skin on my eyelids moves. But I know teenagers that have always been slim that have similar issues. And by doing this, rather than the windshield wiper, you're less likely to get that tiger striping or barcoding effect that you get when your lid folds over on itself. Always start from the outer edge because if you do deposit too much on accident it's much easier to blend it away without your nose in the way. 
and I prefer to start gently and build colour up. So, here we go. And you can see that's just one very well tapped off dip. Um, I actually got, when I buy Ignis Cosmetics, I actually buy mine through, um, with this particular tin I got through their Etsy store. So, that's always worth a look at. So I'm just slowly building this colour up, really sort of, once I've got barely any pigment left on the brush, I'm really kind of buffing that top edge just to soften it and give it a nice gentle fade out. And continue down the lid. So, I'm probably going to tell you this in the intro, but because I haven't filmed it yet, and in case with pain and everything I forget, five hours Sunday I was swatching to try and get, I was taking each shade individually, going through all of my palettes, swatching anything that looked close, and writing down the closest matches. And then once I'd done that for all 18 shades, I then went through and swatched all the ones that I'd shortlisted against each other to determine which one was the closest to Jeffrey's swatch. And I actually think I've done, re I mean, Fortunately, I've got a, there's a lot of green palettes that I didn't include. Um, I mean, I didn't include all of my blush tribe palettes because there's. Um, I mean, Hasina's got a load of green. Hasina two's got a load of greens in it. Layla two's got a load of greens in it. Um, but I didn't include those because you can't get them anymore. The only palette I've included that is not easy to get anymore is the BH Cosmetics Pistachio palette. But there's enough of those wandering around at the moment on places like Depop that you can actually still get hold of it. Plus I know a lot of people did buy that palette. And I think I'm pretty sure I only used that in one of the shades. So, again, just really softening that top line. While building these shades up. I always sit back and relax my brows and check both because you can see where this one today has gone a bit puffy with my fibro. Although it's exactly the same shape on the lid, it looks flat whereas that one looks rounded. So I'm just going to need to just bring that centre bit up ever so slightly. to give the same finished look and that's why I do each shade both eyes individually because you wouldn't well by the time you've then blended all the other colours on top you might not necessarily see where or which shadow needed adjusting but your look will just be slightly off and it's really frustrating when you can't see why
that is super pretty. So I'm just going to clean this brush off on a clean washcloth. I don't use colour switches anymore. They're far too rough on the bristles of your brushes, especially natural hair brushes. I mean, this is synthetic, but I wouldn't advise. In fact, I just you're better off wiping it on the side of your jeans or the side of a matchbook, literally. Right, I'm now going to go for a much more tapered. If you look at the difference between how tapered these brush heads are, basically whatever the width of the brush head, that's how far it will blend it out on your lids. Talking of pistachio palette. I'm going to grab that now. This one. And I'm going in with this shade here which is cone or cup. This is the equivalent to Jeffrey's um, Blood Money Row 2 shade 6. And again, I'm just going to dip very gently into this because you do get a reasonable amount of kick up in this one as well. And I'm going to start off right at the very edge here and just concentrate on blowing just that corner out there. If you've moved your crease, this is where you go to wherever you've moved your crease to. And I'm really sort of depositing it there and then I'm going to grab the previous brush to fluff it to really soften it and fluff it just on that outer edge there and then I'm going to pick up a little bit more pigment and I'm going to run through the crease with it. Again, tiny, tiny little circles this time. Because I don't want to blow it too far up the eye. The whole point of this is deeper shadows look further back, brighter colours look further forward. So by putting this through your crease or wherever you've moved your crease to, it just gives the illusion that that bit of the eye is a little bit further back. So it really helps with the illusion, if you've had to move your crease, that this is the natural part of your eye going back in. Sounds like next door's girls are getting breakfast, because it is still only half past seven in the morning. So I was meant to be recording this yesterday, or Monday, to go up Tuesday today, but I was in so much pain yesterday, after all the swatching on the Sunday, really took it out of me. I just, my brother-in-law reckons I'm Asperger's, the same as him and Chris. This is the way that, you know, when I get stuck into something, I see it blinkers are on, nothing disturbs me, I just, it's not until I finish that I realise quite how much pain it's left me in. So, just putting that down onto that outer third there, of the lid, just sort of flicking up at the edge there, because that helps to give the illusion of the eye coming out and up without needing to do a full-on wing if you're not comfortable with doing one of those. So, I'm going to repeat exactly the same process with this eye. So I'm going to start off just right in this corner, laying down the pigment. And then grabbing the fluffy brush and just 
blending that to give it as soft an edge and blend as possible. I've gone a little bit closer this time because I want more control over it. Because I want control about how far I blend it. But I'm still not putting a lot of pressure on. I don't need this pressure on. I don't need this pressure on. I don't need this pressure on. Name the bat. Now, with this eye, I do struggle because I have these super, super deep creases just here, as you can see. Um, that's from when my eye was pulled around when I was five years old. So that's over 41 years ago now. And I'm seeing the damage now. That's why I tell you, don't pull your lid around. Don't stretch your lid out. Because you might say, no, I'm not seeing any damage now, it's, it's fine, I'm getting away with it. Yeah, you might be getting away with it now. But in 20 years time, 30 years time, 40 years time, what's it going to look like then? So again, I'm just going to... I do keep getting a dry patch just here where I have issues of when I blend colours it blends away if you get that just finish blending all your edges how you want yep yeah, they match and then dip just the tip of the bristles into the pigment and similar to the sort of pointillism, just pat with the tip of the bristles the areas where you need to build the colour up rather than blending or tapping to build the colour up. Right, again clean the brush off. How's your day been? Has it been a good one? I hope it has. If it hasn't been a good one, well then I sincerely hope that tomorrow's day is much, much better for you. And if you're at the start of your day, over your breakfast, listening to me blether to ease you into your morning, Darling, I hope your day is as fabulous as you are. Right, now, colour on the lid. I'm going to grab my Kaleidos Escape Pod palette. And I'm going to go in with shade Saturnalia, which is this one down here. If I can get it to show you without the reflective background. I think that's about as close as I'm going to get as in, in terms of getting you an accurate colour. And this is a dupe for Jeffrey's Row 3, Shade 3. And I'm going to apply this with a flat, this is most likely a lip brush rather than a concealer brush. It's not really wide enough for concealer, but the reason I like it is you can get right into the corner without too much hassle. Now, obviously, you never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush because you'll kill the pigment. But I do usually spray any shimmers before I apply them just to help cut down on the fallout she said as some fell down onto my top so I'm going to just wet it with this you can use any spray priming spray, moisturising spray, setting spray, fixing spray 
Right, this is now wet, the ferrule, so I'm going to stick that in my knuckles and spin. Because the last thing we want is moisture getting down here and loosening the glue, holding the bristles in. Okay, and now I'm going to apply this to my mobile lid. And I've not used any glitter glue with this, it's literally just my Crow and Pebble Primer underneath. As always. But hopefully you can see just how beautiful and stunning that lid colour is. Right, so I'm just going to dry the brush off and then go back in and pick up some more pigment for this eye. Now with this eye, because I already have that damage, I have to do what I tell you not to, which is stretch my lid out. However, I do it in such a way that I cause as little additional damage as possible. I only stretch the lid out as far as I need to, to straighten the creases. As soon as I have covered the area of the creases, I gently release the lid back. Because otherwise what happens is, instead of blending out across the lid like this does, it s stacks up loosely in the creasing here, and then as it dries, it gets into my eye and down my face. You can see there's a little bit of of barcoding there, even with me doing my Viennese Waltz blend. So you can see I'm only pulling the lid out far enough to straighten those creases, get a good blend and then gently letting go. And then the rest of the lid I shall do in the same manner that I did my other one. So if you do already have that sort of damage to your lid, that's how you can apply colour to the mobile lid without causing too much additional damage. There. That is super pretty already. See, I'm lucky. I've, I've been buying... I've, I think Jeffrey's not got his finger on the ball as much as he used to because greens have been the go-to colour for quite some time now. Hence why there was, I had so many green palettes to choose from. Um, I think he's very, very late to bring a green palette out because, you know, I've duped the whole palette. Right. My lovely ones, I'm going to pause you and I am going to pop some base products on, foundation etc. And I will be back to finish this eye look off with you. For me, I've got a bit of work to do. For you, it's going to be absolutely instant. There you go. Hello, okie dokie, I am back. I did my usual soap brow using the pink honey uh, honey glue strawberry sherbet. Get it the right way up, it might help. It's basically soap in a pot with a hole you can stick your spoolie in. They recommend using it wet, personally I recommend using it dry because then it leaves your brows a little bit sticky which means the powder has something to stick to the powder then sets your brow the powder in question that I used was from my my own curated Lethal Cosmetics uh, individuals and I used the shade Habitat which is this light khaki 
and this one happens to be a dupe for row 3 shadow 2. The colour I'm going to put underneath my eyes is also from here. It's Syncope, which is this real deep khaki down here. This is a dupe for row 3 shade 4 in Jeffreys. So I'm just going to get this on a flat topped brush and put this right underneath my lower lash line. leg seal and then the shade that I'm going to blend it out with is one of my come on open it up one of my individual shadows it's a beautonomy it's the shade called River, which is this lovely teal. This is a dupe for Jeffrey Row 2, shade 5. And I'm going to go in with this flat topped brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. Flat topped, but chunky. Great for getting under your lower lashes. And um, basically. You can use any dense shader brush to do this with. I'm just going to run that along the lower lash line just to soften and buff. Next door, I don't pick up their table when they move it. Helpful. That's not normally the side I have to worry about with noise. So you can see that teal mixing in with that khaki has given a really soft look to my under eye. And now, seriously, for the inner corner, I'm going to use Lethal Cosmetics Vertex. Now, this is a dupe for uh, Row 1, Shade 4, and this is just a cheap lip brush that I bought from eBay well over a decade ago. I'm going to pop that just on the inner corner here. Look at that. And bring that along under the tear duct and blend it in with the shades coming along under the eye. Right, I just need to grab one of my highlighters. Bear with.
Okay, I am back. I've got a highlighter here. It's from an indie brand that no longer exists, so there's no point telling you what it is. But suffice to say, it's a white base with a green shift to it. Just to go up under the tail of my brow there. Right, beautiful ones, I am going to pause you for one last time. I am going to pop some more of this highlight onto my face. I am going to apply some mascara, some lipstick, and I also have a dupe for one of his lipsticks. from a UK indie brand no less and some setting spray and I will be back with the finished look so don't go anywhere and here's the finished look that you've already seen from the start of the film um, I used my Essence Lash Princess Volume Mascara with the orange top. Use the same indie highlighter. The lipstick is from a company called Slay Cosmetics. And the shade is Camolicious. This is a dupe of Jeffrey's khaki one. But they bought this out before Jeffrey had his khaki one out from the summer one he did a couple of years ago where he had you're still on the property and he did a khaki one then this was already out before then because I already had this prior to getting Jeffrey's one and to be honest this one's better so there we go one duped a palette from palettes I already own. So I have just saved myself a significant moolah and have produced a look stunning. If I don't say it, no one else will. Right, my lovelies, I really hope you've enjoyed this and I really hope that it inspires you to look through your palettes and just see how close you can get to duping Jeffrey's stuff from colours you already have. And remember, it doesn't have to be exactly spot on. As long as it's close enough and you're happy with it. I mean, personally, I think he missed a trick by not including shades like Crunch from the Ice Cream Palette. He's got mattes like that, but he hasn't got fantastic shimmer like that, has he? Um, he missed out by... Uh, what other ones do I think of that I thought he should have had? A proper deep... Okay. That's one of my igneous ones again. Back in the pistachio palette dessert. See if you'd included one like that, it could have duped as a highlighter. And then going into my Certify Affinity, look at all these, well Affinity 2, sorry. There's so many shades here that he could have included. There's that gorgeous sort of deep grass green. I know he's got 
the green brown duochrome but he could have put a gold brown shift in um, beautiful vibrant grass green he could have put in something like this. There's, there's so many colours that that I feel would have made this a much more rounded palette because not being funny a lot of the colours that he's chosen once you put them on the eyes they're not going to look all that different. Um, you know he's got the two khaki shades in there But one of them is only slightly deeper than the other. Um, to me, it's still very much a palette for Caucasian to medium, medium tan skins. A lot of those colours, once you put them on someone with beautiful, rich, dark, melanin enriched skin, they're going to look ashy, they're going to look chalky. A lot of them are not even going to show up properly. But, as I said, hopefully this will encourage you to look through what you've already got. Because the whole point of this is not to for you to rush out and buy the palettes that I've used to dupe this with. The whole point of this is that you use what you already have in your collection to dupe the palette. I actually, although I spent, I spent five hours doing it and paid for it the next day, I actually really enjoyed swatching everything and narrowing it down, the whole process of... Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I hope you've enjoyed the film. Uh, if you have, it would be awesome if you could hit that like button for me. Bit of a comment, maybe even share it amongst your friends to help raise the profile slightly. Once you've done that, please double check you're still subscribed. I lost three subscribers last week. Uh, well actually I lost five but two of you messaged me going I've been deleted and I've had to re uh, resubscribe again <sighs> I don't know what YouTube are playing at but they're really not being helpful to the smaller creator at all right now so please double check you're subscribed please double check that you're if you've got notifications on that they say all not personalised because mine got knocked back to personalised. Not that they seem to be sending emails out at the moment anyway, but in the hope that they decide to reverse that decision the same way they decided to implement it without telling us, you're going to want it on all in order to get notifications, not just from me, but from all the channels you follow. Uh, if you've tripped over me some other way, hi, hello, welcome, I hope you've enjoyed it here. Um, my channel is ever so slightly nutty. I blether about everything and nothing. Um, yeah, what you see is what you get, pretty much. So if you like what you see, it'll be awesome if you'd like to join the 4F family. We are the nicest family on YouTube. It's super easy to do. You just hit that red subscribe button and turn it grey. Then you ring my bell. Ring the bell and choose all notifications in the hope that YouTube will start emailing us again soon. In the meantime, until they do, I have got a huge back side, yes, but catalogue of films that you can watch. Um, I've got a couple of other duping videos. I dupe melts. Um, Moerte palette and I dupe the pure Raw Beauty Christie collab 
both of which I wanted but couldn't get and they sold out they're not coming back basically so whilst I wouldn't normally dupe smaller brands like Pure in this occasion I physically cannot get the palette anyway so I duped it I've got other makeup tutorials I've got product reviews um, I've got challenges, collabs, tags I even read my favourite poem See, Jill of all trades, some would say master of none, mistress of none. No, no, no. Anywho, basically if you've got some time to kill and just want to chill out for a bit, as I've said for what seems like time immemorial now, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and indulge darling. Right, in the meantime, all that remains for me to say, as ever, my darlings, is you'll stay fabulous, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.